statistical data which illustrates the rich and efficient complexity of human DNA is truly mind-boggling. Uh, Francis Collins, head of the Human Genome Project, wrote that a live reading of human DNA code at a rate of one letter per second would take 31 years of reading, even if reading continued day and night. Printing these letters out in regular font size on normal bond paper and binding them all together would result in a tower the height of the Washington Monument. Now, DNA is essentially genetic information written small, written very, very, very small. In fact, it has been said that all the genetic information for all the diversity of life that has ever existed on Earth could be contained within a teaspoon, and there would still be enough room left for every book that has ever been written. The structure of DNA was first discovered in 1953 by James Watson and Francis Crick. Most of us are now familiar with its characteristic form, a double helix twisted ladder. What you may not know is that the rungs of this ladder are made up of four chemical components, or bases, represented by the letters A, C, G and T. Each of these bases has a specific shape. The A base can sit comfortably alongside the T, and the G base next to the C. These partnerships form the base pairs, of which there can only be four possible combinations. A and T, T and A, C and G, and G and C. And as a result, four possible rungs. Now there are three billion base pairs like this in the human genome, and as a result of its unique structure, it would be possible to split the entire double helix down the middle, and then recreate the complete genome from the remaining data. These three billion base pairs essentially form an instruction booklet on how to build a human being. Now, each of the 100 trillion cells in our bodies contains this six-foot-long double helix instruction booklet. That makes 100 trillion copies of the booklet and 600 trillion feet of information. The question is, how do you get from this digital microscopic information, genetic information, to walking, talking, living, breathing, YouTube video-making human beings like me? The process itself is truly industrial. The molecule can be thought of as a factory with a production line involving varying molecular machines devoted to particular tasks in the production of the proteins that go to make up the human body. In a process known as transcription, the first molecular machine reads a selection of the DNA helix, unwinding it to reveal the genetic instructions. A second machine then copies these instructions to form a messenger RNA molecule. RNA then carries the information out of the cell nucleus to the ribosome, a two-part molecular factory located in the cytoplasm, a highly complex gel mixture of proteins, lipids and carbohydrates. Following transcription, within the ribosome the information is processed and a tailor-made sequence chain of amino acids transported from other parts of the cell is created. Three rungs of RNA information make up one amino acid. This sequence determines the type of protein being created. The then completed one-dimensional chain is subsequently sent from the ribosome to a barrel-shaped machine that folds it into a shape required for its function, thus forming the completed 3D protein. The finished product is then guided by yet another molecular machine to the exact location where it is needed. Truly astounding. How deeply satisfying, states Collins in his book, The Language of God, how deeply satisfying is the digital elegance of DNA. How aesthetically appealing and artistically sublime are the components of living things. The elegance behind life's complexity is indeed reason for awe and for belief in God. 
Bill Gates once said that DNA is like a software program, only much more complex than anything we've ever devised. And that's the truth. Human beings, with all our sophistication, intelligence and imagination, have not been able to come up with anything that comes even close to DNA. But does that mean that the How to Build a Human Being instruction booklet, packaged into each of the 100 trillion cells in our body, needs an author? Or can it be explained without one?